नमस्कार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एच एम पी शान और पेंटोस फॉस्फेट पाथवे बट बिफोर दैट प्लीज मेक श्योर टू सब्सक्राइब नाउ एच इट्स ऑल्सो कॉल एच एम पी शान बिकॉज इट इज़ कॉल्ड हेक्जोज मोनो फॉस्फेट शांत एंड इट इज़ कॉल सो इट इज़ ऑल्सो कॉल पेंटोज फॉस्फेट पाथवे एंड इट इज़ एन अल्टरनेटिव पाथवे टू ब्लैक कॉलिस एंड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू फेज ऑक्सीडेटिव फेज एंड नॉन ऑक्सीडेटिव फेज and it's called shunt because it uh, it's connecting many different uh, conversions we'll see okay and in a uh, oxid so uh, there are two phases oxidative phase and non oxidative phase in oxidative phase glucose 6 phosphate is the starting reactant and uh, um, gc uh, glucose 6 phosphate is a six carbon compound that's why this uh, um, pathway is also called hmp shunt hexose monophosphate sh- uh, shunt and in a non oxidative phase ribulose 5 phosphate is the uh, is the um, starting reactant so that's why it's also called pentose phosphate pathway now in oxidative phase it is a irreversible phase in which nadph is formed it is divided into three steps first is formation of 6 phosphate glucolactonate lactone and uh, second step is formation of 6 phosphate gluconate and third step is formation of ribulose 5 phosphate so we come to the step 1 it is oxidation at uh, carbon 1 takes place in uh, glucose 6 phosphate and it forms 6 phosphate gluconate so uh, basically we add a uh, f- um, o group to uh, uh, to the compound so basically the cho group which is attached cho h group gets converted to co group in this um, pathway next um, uh, it gets converted in the presence of nad positive can be converted into nadph and also hydrogen and this enzyme it occurs in the presence of g6p dehydrogenase okay in the presence of dehydrogenase next uh, we convert in step 2 we hydrolyze 6 phosphate gluconate and uh, it takes present it takes place in the presence of a uh, hydrolase enzyme so um, so the 6 phosphate Uh, gluconate is converted to 6 phosphor gluconate so first it was 6 phosphor glucoacetone and now we convert it to a uh, nate so from acetone it's nate gluco gluconoacetate gluconoacetone and then gluconate okay the, so that is step 2 6 phosphor gluconate and step 3 and it is the last step of oxidative uh, phase the so in this step uh, uh, d carboxylation takes place and nadph and co2 they are produced in the presence of 6 phosphate gluconate dehydrogenase and they form the ribulose 5 phosphate and the c1 is removed so we get co2 so we get ribulose 5 phosphate now from here we get the next products so uh, this is now the uh, non oxidative phase so that's why it's also called uh, pentose phosphate uh, pathway so now uh, so ribulose uh, you guys i hope you understood the third step yeah did you understand Uh, so six phosphate gluconate was gets converted into ribulose six phosphate in the nad uh, with conversion of nadp into nadph plus h and also co2 is removed from the carbon one so you can see and uh, why did we uh, so you can see why we converted the oil in oxidation phase in the first phase why it was this because we needed to get co2 out we were converting it sh- uh, to sugar so in the first step we converted it uh, to form like the basic co2 in the second step um we uh, formed so we converted it from ring structure to the basic and now from the basic structure we remove co2 so this is the first three steps next in oxidative phase uh, the starting reactant is the end product of oxidative phase which is ribulose 6 phosphate 
so it uh, so we'll describe the steps one by one so first is formation of ribose and xylulose phosphate uh, how does this happen well a ribulose 5-phosphate is converted into ribose 5-phosphate by the action of the enzyme isomerase because it is its isomer from ribulose to ribose ribulose is ketone form and ribose is uh, um, aldehyde form so it is isomerase and uh, ribulose 5-phosphate is changed into xylulose 5-phosphate by the action of epimerase so one is epimerization and the other is isomerization you can see these two steps so uh, it's um, so the keto group uh, we converted into aldehyde group that's isomerization and if we convert it into epimerase basically we uh, change the configuration at this we get xylulose 5-phosphate next is formation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and uh, pseudoheptulose 7-phosphate and now when xylulose and ribulose 5-phosphate they react with each other in the uh, presence of enzyme called transketolase uh, a 2 carbon fragment is shifted from xylulose 5-phosphate to ribulose 5-phosphate to produce a 3 carbon G3 and 7 pseudoheptolase so basically from xyloheptolase we are moving 2 carbon compound onto this um, onto uh, this one this compound our what we called it this one it was called ribose 5 phosphate yeah so we move uh, two carbons from the xylulose onto ribose 5 phosphate and we get a 7 one so we call it pseudo heptolase 7 phosphate now the phosphate gas is at the seventh carbon so we call it 7 phosphate and the other three molecules this uh, xylulose is left with we, it is glyceraldehyde so it becomes glyceraldehyde and this is transformation trans, uh, transfer so we call it transketolase now next step is formation of fructose 6 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate so acetoheptolase it reacts with G3P and it produces a uh, fructose 6 phosphate and uh, erythrose 4 phosphate in the presence of enzyme transaldolase that was ketolase because it, it transported it to ketone uh, ketone group and this is transaldolase and they transferred 3 carbon segment from acetoheptolase to GT3P now from here we're going to transfer this three carbon fragment on the top and it's trans aldolase onto work uh, uh, transporting it onto our aldehyde compound so we call it trans aldolase and so we get uh, so uh, from seven we went to six and this one gets one uh, additional carbon so we call it erythrose 4 phosphate so we just transported one carbon uh, one fragment now the fructose 6 phosphate is an intermediate glycolysis while erythrose 4 phosphate it reacts with again xylulose 5 phosphate in the presence of transketolase and uh, it produces fructose 6 phosphate and gd3p now we just want to get a fructose 6 phosphate out of this out of this so from we're basically this is another pathway through which we can get so uh, we're, uh, we want to get fructose 6-phosphate so even if we have erythrose phosphate we're going to convert it into fructose 6-phosphate how we're going to convert it we're going to again take xylulose so xylulose is our storage compound and from it we're basically um, getting things okay so like in this step we and this so it is a uh, 3 carbon and so we're uh, always transporting 2 carbons from it we transport two carbons from the xylulose 5-phosphate onto erythrose 4-phosphate and we get um, uh, fructose 6-phosphate in the presence of transketose and glyceraldehyde and they further are used in the glycolysis cycle. So this is an alternative pathway in uh, glycolysis and uh, it takes place in the cytoplasm and uh, this is basically an alternative pathway and first we convert glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphoglucoacetone and then into 6-phosphogluconate and then we convert it into ribol uh, ribolose 6-phosphate ribolose 6-phosphate then converts into xylulose and uh, xylulose and uh, fructose 6-phosphate
no ribo ribolose converts into ribose and xylulose and we get ribolose from this one from this uh, uh, phosphogluconate so basically we have three steps and in the fourth one we we get two more and then in the fifth one we also get two more that's easy we're transferring and then in the last one we we break the acetoapylose into our proper molecules and when we break it we get another one and we're again going to convert it so this is basically so for forming fructose is phosphate after this we actually have two steps and then at the end we again convert it into this so you just need to be known the formula the rest is easy so this is all for hrp shan i hope you guys understood and if you have any question you can ask in the comments and please make sure to subscribe it shows your great support thank you